There we go. Crazy technology. Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com and happy to be here today with you for a little bit of paper cutting fun. Darn technology was giving me some trouble. So got on a few minutes early, but we are ready to go. All right. Yay. I have some fun for you today. I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera over. But before I do, you might notice behind me, there's a sneak peek of a few samples. So we have been fast and furious working on our design for our Makers Mojo event. So if you've not already registered, go ahead and register. We're already having fun in the Facebook group with play along posts, which give you an opportunity to earn prizes. Yes, we give away uh, 17 fabulous prizes throughout the event. So um, you don't want to miss out. It's a lot, a lot of fun. So um, anyway, I'm going to switch the camera over and we will get started with today's project. Okay. So I am pulling in um, a couple of different products I'm mixing and matching. So I'm pulling in the Celebrate with Tags stamp set and the coordinating celebration tags. I think it's called Seal Celebrations tag dies. And I love these. Um, so you've got this long tag and a shorter tag and then all these great little elements to um, decorate it with. So, hey, Susan. Hey, Jean. So glad you guys are here today. So, yes, I love these. I've been playing with these a lot. Um, and you could do so much with them besides just little tags. We'll, we'll talk more about that later, right? I'll show you more and more. And then we've got the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. Now, this is one of our large paper stacks. So instead of 12, you've got 24, right? Um, so it's awesome and great colors um, that you can mix and match. Now, I am also going to bring in the Cottage Wreaths dies that are part of this whole Gingham Cottage suite. There is a stamp set that coordinates with these dies that you can get in a bundle, which is this Cottage Wreath stamp set. I don't have this on the supply list because I chose not to use this one today. I, um, I'm using a sentiment from the Celebrate with Tags instead. You could do either one. I just wanted you to be aware that there is a bundle for that so that you don't miss out. So what are we making? Oh my gosh, let me show you. So cute. So I have this adorable, that fun little treat holder and I've got some little um, caramels in there and you can put quite a few in there. This box measures, let's see, I did write it down. It's about two and a quarter, three and a half tall and about one inch deep. Um, so it's lots of fun. You can put a lot of little stuff in there. Rice Krispie treat would fit nice. A hand sanitizer, a couple of Ghirardelli chocolates would fit in nicely as well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make this. Hey, Kay, so glad you're coming in with us today as well. So let's start off with our card base. I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored. Now, you guys could use your paper trimmer to score. You don't have to use the Simply Scored tool, but I do like to use it. So my card base here, so my outside of my tree holder is made with this first die. So let me, let me go ahead and bring this back in. So this is one of the large tag dies from that Celebrations Tags die set, okay? So we're going to use this to make the outside of our tree holder. So I've already die cut that. And then instead of folding on this center score line here, I want to lay this up in here. You know, I mark my simply scored every one inch. I just ran a Sharpie. That way I can easily see it. So I can do things like this really easily. Um, so what I'm wanting to do is I'm lining that up and I want to score half inch to either side of that center score line. So instead of using this center score line, I'm going to put a score line a half inch to the front and a half inch to the back, okay? And that's where I'm actually going to fold my card base instead of that middle line. Now, I don't want these tabs on here, so I'm gonna cut those off. So let's get our paper snips out and we'll go ahead and cut these off. Oh good, I'm glad that you guys are excited. I hope you like this one, it's fun. I, you know, little treat holders, um, are such a great way to leave, you know, a gifty for a coworker. Um, 
you could, I think it would be fun at the holiday table to have them out at everybody's place setting as a little treat. You know, you could give them to your, your kids' teacher, your grandkids' teachers, to the kids themselves, all kinds of fun. All right, so that is the outside of my little tree holder, okay? So let's make the inside um, box So it's gonna go inside there. Now I will give you the complete supply list. So all you have to do is click on those links, place your orders for anything that you need. And then you'll also have all the cut dimensions will be listed. So you'll have everything you need to be able to recreate this on your own. So I've got a piece of real red cardstock. It is six and three eighths by three and three quarters the way I have it oriented right here. And I'm gonna score on this long side at two and three quarters and three and five eighths. So two and three quarters and three and five eighths. All right, now I wanna rotate this and I wanna score in on each end seven eighths. So, or I can put my marker at seven eighths and I'm gonna say this wrong, two and seven eighths. Let me make sure I've got my math right. Yes, two and seven eighths. Okay. So I'm gonna score both sides there. Okay. Now we are ready to clip and assemble this little inside box. Oh, good, you guys like making little boxes and bags. Yay, all right, good, good, good. That's a good thing. So I want to clip in, I'm going to go straight in along these score lines here. So this is going to be my box side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Okay. Now I'm going to put full leads on the score lines. Just give it a little crease so I can kind of see it a little bit better. And I want to miter or angle cut these little tabs here. It's not critical. I just like to do that. It makes it a little easier for the box assembly um, in case you're um, a little angled on some of your snips there. I tend to be a little angled on some of my snips. So what you end up with is like a little pie shaped. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this up. Let me get my bone folder. So we're going to dry fit this first so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so these tabs are going to come up, and then you've got your box, and then your other side to the box. So, you, so you're doubling on the sides there to make that nice and sturdy. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our tabs. Now, you can use liquid adhesive or tear and tape. I'm going to use tear and tape because I don't have the patience to let the liquid glue dry. So we're going to use a little tear and tape for this today. So I'm just going to use a little bit on the tab. Okay, and so I'm going to adhere that right to there, but before I do, I wanna go ahead and put my tear and tape on my other spots, just because it'll make it so much easier for me to put this together. So I'm gonna put a piece on the edge and then right up close to the fold on this particular tab and then the one straight across from it. So these are gonna be my front tabs. Okay, all right, now make sure you run your bone folder along your tear and tape, it gives it a good, good, good adherence. It makes it easier to get that tape off, that backing paper off. All right, let's go ahead and try to assemble this. So I'm gonna pop this tape off. What are you, there we go, all right. And then I'm just going to try to put this at a 90 degree angle so this is nice and flat and square and adhere those tabs in place. Okay, nice. We got the back of that done. And then let's pull off the tear and tape on the sides and we'll close that up. Great. Love it already. This is so easy to do. You can make a bunch of these really, really quickly. All right. So I'm gonna push my tabs out because I don't want them to stick before I'm ready. So I get them where I want it. And then I can just fold that flat and put that in place. And same thing on the other side. Great. Now you can see I had a little bit of an angle when I, when I clipped that. 
So I'm just going to clip that edge away. I didn't want to angle cut those because I wanted it to be pretty. Because you'd be able to see that, right? All right. Got my bone folder to get it all nice and secure. So cute already. But when we add this little decoration, doesn't it just give it an extra wow factor and super easy to do? All right, now I am gonna use liquid glue for this. That way I can have a little bit of a sliding going on and it won't take that long to dry. So I'm put some right on the back and the bottom. We'll start there. So let me get this somewhat centered between those score lines, left to right, okay? And I'm gonna fold up that back. Now I'm gonna push up with my bone folder, kind of give that a little bit of a secure there. And so my if my spacing is not even left to right, that's okay. I can slide it if it bothers me, or I can leave it alone until it starts to dry, right? And then you're good to go. And then let's put some on the other side and we'll close this up. And then we're gonna let this dry for just a moment. Give that a good push with my bone folder. So yes, tear and tape would work as well, or you can choose to use the liquid glue. It's really up to you. Depends on your patience, right? And how fast you'll let things dry or how long you'll let things dry. I, I don't have really great patience for that. All right, so next I'm gonna bring in a piece of that gingham cottage designer paper. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So fun. And we'll grab our stamp and seal. And we're just gonna adhere that right to the front. So again, you guys will get all these measurements after the after fact. I will go in and update the video description. So you have to expand that, you know, like you might see a sentence or two, you have to do the show more to get it to open up and show that to you, cute, right? All right, next, we want to decorate the front of this with a couple of garden green reeds. So I'm using the cottage country reeds, country reeds. These are the country reeds dies. And I'm gonna grab both of these and cut those out of garden green cardstock. So I've got that right there. So there's two different ones, one's got um, I, I like this one in the back. It's a little fatter in the center. And then you've got this one, which is a little more of a line, um, delicate line, I guess you would say. Okay. Now I want to add some Wink of Stella to this one because I want a little shimmer in there. So we're going to grab our Wink of Stella glitter brush right now. And I am just going to color quickly across my die cut. Now you could have done this on the cardstock before we die cut it if you prefer. It might be a little bit easier, but it doesn't take too long. So it's not bad. You don't have to do it, but it adds such a nice little touch. I don't know if you guys could see it very well on the other one, um, but it does add a beautiful, just little, little touch of shimmer to it, which is always a good, good thing, I think. I like that shimmer. I don't think you can use too much Wink of Stella. All right, so I'm gonna be happy with that. Let's see if you guys can see that. I don't know if it'll pick it up in camera, if you can see that shimmer. Yes, okay. Now I'm gonna adhere these together. Now one thing I found when working with these dies is that they actually do line up but, I, but sometimes it's hard to get it to line up. So you can just go with it. It doesn't have to be lined up or you can continue to turn it until you find where it seems to line up the best, right? So I think that's it right there. So see how that all of a sudden kind of played down and lined up really nicely versus the offset I had before. So let me show you like the original, I did not spend a lot of time lining it up. So see how it's kind of offset? versus lined up. Hopefully that makes sense what I'm saying. I'm gonna try to line this one up this time. <laughs> we'll see. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. Now, if this was something that caused you a lot of stress, you could use um, adhesive sheets. 
So when you die cut it, put the adhesive sheet on the cardstock first, right? And then die cut it. And then you've got like a peel and stick um, version of your die cut. I didn't do that because I actually don't want the leaves flat. I want them to be able to stand up a little bit. So I didn't really want the whole thing to have adhesive on it. Okay, then we'll line this up. We'll see if I end up lined up again. There we go. I think I got it. And I'm just gonna let that, I'm off a little. I kinda like it just slightly off. All right, I'm gonna push on the back. Got some bits from my machine on there from other die cuts. <laughs> That's okay, right? All right, so now this wreath is ready to adhere right to the front. So cute, I love it. It adds such a really nice touch really quickly. Oh, good, you guys are liking it? Good. All right, a little more liquid glue back here. This one's a little wider, the uh, background one. So I got a little more real estate there to put my liquid glue on. And then we'll lay this right here. And it's okay if it hangs off the edge because it's a treat holder, right? We're not putting it in an envelope. So fun. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. So next, what I want to do is my sentiment. So I've got a scrap of white. And I'll bring in my real red parts, or, uh, A pad and the sentiment, the Be Jolly sentiment. So that is from that tag celebration, celebrate with tags stamp set. So again, I could have used the cottage wreaths sentiment. That would have been nice as well. But I liked this. I like the bold, the bold red stamped image. All right. So at this point, you could fussy cut this out with, with scissors, right? Your little snips. Or you can choose to use, there's a little banner die that fits up nicely and die cut that out. So I'm going to run that through the machine. And I've got my cute little banner. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so I'm gonna add that to the front and let's see if we've got some mini dimensionals. You can use regular ones as well, but I think the minis make it a little bit easier. I know, I'm putting dimensionals on the sentiment. I know, I know, Susan. <laughs> that wreath would be fantastic popped up as well, but I knew I was gonna pop up the sentiment. So I didn't pop up the wreath, but I'm right there with you. We could have popped it up. <laughs> You're so funny. You guys know me too well. I prefer things popped up as well. Cute. All right. Yeah, a pilgrim version for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Nice. Definitely, definitely. That's one thing I love about this um, die set is that the reeds, you can do so much with it. I'll bring in the uh, stamp set, even though I didn't choose to use this, but you can do some really nice things for all kinds of seasons, right? So you've got your spider and your leaves and acorns and berries, and it's just, it's really, really pretty. I've done quite a few projects with this uh, stamp set that I'll be sharing, uh, that I have shared and will continue to be sharing. I did a, a treat box, I think it was last week on my uh, Instagram. If you missed that, that's a playlist is out there for that one as well. And it was a little quick tutorial, so it was fun. I don't know where it is or I'd grab it and show you right now, but I, I don't know where it's at. But you've got lots of great images, so you can make wreaths for any season. And of course, you've got such a variety of color in this uh, gingham cottage paper that you can do a lot of things with it. All right, let's finish this off. I want to, let's see, we'll put in a couple of Ghir Ghirardelli squares since I've got them handy. So they fit in there nicely. There's a little extra wiggle room in there um, versus the little, little red wrapped candies I put in this one. So you could go whatever direction you wanted to go in with it. And again, uh, a small hand sanitizer, travel hand sanitizer would fit nicely in there as well. If you were, you know, wanting to gift a little hand sanitizer. So I'm just straining the ribbon through the holes. The die cut that for me. So I've got my decorative edge and these cute holes to be able to tie my ribbon right on. So let's Flip that over. My bows end up upside down. So this is why I am tying upside down because then maybe it'll look right side up when I'm done. 
That's what I'm going for. We'll see what happens. As soon as I say it, it's going to come out opposite. <laughs> yeah, I think that this would be a great, yeah, a, a great surprise on the dinner table. Wouldn't that be fun? Like having it at everybody's place setting. Love it, love it, love it. All right, needs a little bling. So let's pull in some red rhinestone. Why not? Now on the original one, I put single rainstones, but you could do little groupings of rainstones as well to make them look more like a cluster of berries. Let's try that on this. I don't know. We'll see what it looks like. It might not look good, but we'll find out. We're going to find out pretty darn quickly. I'm going to do little clusters of three. I'm kind of liking that. It's cute. What do you guys think? Too much? Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. Hmm, do I just do three sets? Let's see what it looks like. We can always move them if we need to. Oh, I put them right on top of each other. Let's at least slide them out a little bit so that they're not on top of each other. <laughs> cute, 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 cute. You could go crazier and put even more on, but I like that too. Do you guys have a preference, the single berries? or the groups of three. I think they're both very, very nice. Yeah, you like it with the three? Yeah, okay. Yes, you could do the ribbon slider with this design um, for your treats. And if you guys don't know what that is, let's see, I don't know if I have one handy to show you, but basically what you would do, I'm, I'll show you what I mean. That's a great point, Jean. So if you took your candies, pull them out. This is another option. Slide your ribbon in. We're gonna do a version of a gift card holder using this technique uh, in our next card club. So if you're not a Forget-Me-Not card club member, you might wanna join us next month. We're doing gift card holders. All right, so if you wanted to have it so that you could slide your treats out with the ribbon, Slide your ribbon across, then put your treat down in it and it pushes the ribbon down. Now my ribbon's probably not long enough to do this because I didn't cut it for this. And then you could tie your, your bow or whatever you wanna tie. And then when you go to pull this, they pop right out. So cool, makes sense? Yes, I hope. So I'm just gonna tie this one and let it be how it is. And ta -da! There we go. So you can make treats for all year. You can make little Halloween ones. You can make little fall ones for the Thanksgiving table. You could have them for Christmas. You can make Valentine ones, just winter in general. So you got lots of lots of great ways to use this cute little treat box all year long, right? And with these celebrate celebrations tag dies, I have a hard time with that. With these dies, you've got so many seasons in here. Um, it's got the heart, it's got some candles, a balloon for birthday, the mitten, snowflakes, some labels. So it's it's a really versatile um, stamp and die bundle. So you can do a lot with it. All right, if you guys have questions, let me know, let me know. Yes, good, you guys are loving it. Yay, 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 yay. All right, so don't forget, uh, registration is going on for Makers Mojo right now. You are not gonna wanna miss all of our fun. It's two full days of crafty fun. Um, and we demonstrate, there's five of us, it's me, uh, Melissa Kerman, Audra Monk, Anne-Marie Heil, and Joe Blackman. And we each do uh, two presentations, two live presentations throughout the two days. And so we demonstrate one project, but then you get alternates as well. So that's what you were seeing behind me was um, some alternates of one of my demonstrations. So you could uh, get a glimpse at that. You can't tell what it is I'm demonstrating on that project, though. You can't see that well behind me, but you will find out more the day of the event. So, all right. Um, and if you are looking for the opportunity to get your Stampin' Up! products at a discount, 
or maybe you just want a, a, a something to take your mind off of the day-to-day stress, right? And, and take advantage of our wonderful starter kit deal. So you can get $155 in product for just $99 through the end of October. So if you're interested in finding out more about that or ready to jump on in and become a diamond, let me know. I'm happy to help you. All right, you guys are loving it. Good, good, good. Thank you so much. I will hopefully see all of you next Tuesday for a little more.